Are you sure? Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never ask a bride why she's getting married. Don't wear a skirt on a windy day. Deodorant is not a shower. Don't sniff chili flakes. <laughs> and don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. Last Thursday, top Congress functionaries from across India gathered at the party headquarters in New Delhi. As the meeting started, Uttar Pradesh Congress Chief Ajay Rai sought to know the party's stand on Ram Lala's Pran Pratishtha or consecration ceremony on the 22nd of January. He wanted to know if Malikajun Kharge and Sonia Gandhi would attend the ceremony in Ayodhya. Kharge was equivocal. He said it was a personal invitation to him as leader of the opposition in the Raj Sabha. And he would decide what to do, whether to go or not at an appropriate time. Really, top leaders from across India gather and you don't find the Ayodhya Ram temple is so. The BJP's central plank in the 2024 Lok Sabha election important enough to discuss. I asked this question to a senior Congress leader. He was rather philosophical. Bhagwan Ram ka banwas chauda saal ka hi tha. As he said, Lord Ram's exile was for 14 years. Hamara to pata nahi kitana chalega. No idea how long our exile from power will go on. Leave it, you know how our party works. That was what the Congress leader told me. The high level meeting Ended with the, the Congress finalizing Rahul Gandhi's 66 day Bharat Jodo Nyaya Yatra from Imphal to Mumbai uh, from the 14th of January. That will set the stage or tone for the Gandhi versus Modi clash the third time since 2014. If you thought the Congress might want to reach out to Dalit voters by projecting Malikarjun Kharge as the prime ministerial candidate, as Mamta Bairji and Arvind Kejriwal had suggested, here is the Congress party's response. Rahul Gandhi has to be the face. For the next over two months, you will see all Congress leaders and workers leaving everything aside to focus on Rahul Gandhi's infall to Mumbai Yatra. The essential message of the first leg of Rahul Gandhi's Bahad Joro Yatra was that the ruling BJP was targeting the Muslims and minorities and creating a communal divide. He might not have said it in as many words, but that was the central message. The same will be the message of the second leg of the Yatra, which has been named Bharat Jodo Nyaya Yatra. One does not know how this hate versus love message would be perceived and interpreted when the entire country is expected to be what you call Ram Man or imbued with the spirit of Lord Ram. On Saturday, Kharge said that attending the consecration ceremony in Ayodhya was a matter of personal faith and anyone can go if they are invited. He however, however did not say whether he would go. He will decide very soon, as he said. There is no word from Sonia Gandhi yet. So why do Sonia Gandhi and Kharge seem to be in a dilemma over this? Ask Congress leaders, I mean, they, they give you four or five possible reasons. The first reason that they give may seem a bit facile, that it is the Congress's usual ostrich-like head in the sand approach. Just close your eyes and repeat Amir Khan's advice in Three Idiots. All is well, all is well. It's not the first time the Congress seems to be looking the other way when the storm is building up. It seems that the Gandhis are willing to wait out the Modi storm till 2029 or even 34, they can afford to because Rahul Gandhi is 53 years old and he can wait for another decade or so as long as he controls the party. Ordinary Congress workers and leaders may be feeling restless, but they can do nothing about it. I was telling you about the All Is Well song from Three Idiots. The lyrics seem to be coming straight from their heart, from the hearts of the ordinary congressmen. You remember the lyrics? Confusion hi confusion has sol solution kuch pata nahi. Solution jo mila to question kya tha pata nahi. Hoot ghuma, siti baja, siti baja ke bol bhaiya all is well. Well, it's a bit difficult for me to translate. Basically, it means that there is 
so much confusion and no solution. So just whistle and say all is well. I mean that's for ordinary uh, congressman. The second explanation for Sonia, Sonia Gandhi and, and Kharge's dilemma, which Congress leaders say, is something I find difficult to believe. That the Congress High Command thinks that the Ayodhya event, that the Ayodhya event is electorally inconsequential and that they can let it pass. Their assessment could be, as is often echoed by their party colleagues, the people won't vote for the Ram Temple. Because it's secondary to what matters in their day-to-day -day lives. The Congress would therefore focus on what the party thinks matters in a common, common man's daily life. Say Hindenburg report on the Adani group, undermining of institutions, democratic backsliding, misuse of central investigation agencies, Chinese occupation across the line of actual control and so on and so forth. You may ask how these issues affect a common man's day-to-day -day life. But I am going by what Congress leaders keep talking day in, day out. The fact, however, is that the Ayodhya Ram Temple will be the dominant theme of the 2024 Lok Sabha election discourse, whether the Congress likes it or not. Just check the donations received during the 44-day Sri Ram Janamumi Ram Mandir Nidhi Samarpan Abhiyan in 2021. It's 2100 crore rupees collected from nearly 13 crore families. If even two members from each of these families were to vote for what they donated for, it would account for 26 crore vote votes. Or so the ruling party leaders think. Look at the pace and scale of the Akshat or sacred rice outreach by the RSS to what it says turn the entire country into Ayodhya. It includes the distribution of Akshat or sacred rice among five crore families. A 60-day campaign to bring devotees from across India to Ayodhya among a host of other plans. However, the third region cited by Congress leaders has merits that Sonia Gandhi and Mallik Arjun Kharge see a BJP trap behind the invitation from Sri Ram Janbhumi Tirth Chhetra Trust to attend the Plan Patistha uh, ceremony. What better finale of the Ram Temple movement than having Sonia Gandhi and other opposition leaders attend the temple's inauguration? It would mark the ultimate triumph of the Bajrang Dal and VHP activists and other affiliates of the RSS, whom the Congress labeled as communal forces. It would mean the Congress party's endorsement of the Ram Temple movement and therefore the Babri Mosque demolition, if they were to attend. The fourth region cited by Congress leaders is their apprehension that attending the ceremony wouldn't be seen favorably by the Muslim community. Asaduddin Ovesi and Baduddin Ajmal have already sounded the alarm. Ovesi said that we have lost our masjid where Muslims recited the Holy Quran for 500 years and that there was a conspiracy regarding three, four more mosques. Baduddin Ajmal has declared the BJP as the enemy of our religion, of our religion, quote unquote, and advised Muslims to stay home from the 20th to the 26th of January. Kharge and Sonia Gandhi must be listening to these remarks very anxiously. All of these explanations could be valid. Congress leader Sashi Thaur said that invitees to the Ayodhya ceremony should be, as he said, free to make a personal choice rather than be described as anti-Hindu if they don't go or playing into the BJP's hands if they do, if they go. But this personal choice is difficult to make when it comes to Sonia Gandhi and Malikarjun Kharge. Playing into the BJP's hands and being seen as endorsing the Ram Temple movement can be politically as tricky as being labelled as anti-Hindu for boycotting the ceremony. If, if Sonia Gandhi must choose between these two options, the first is relatively safer. That is uh, going there. Given that you know the, the a majority of Muslims accepted the Supreme Court verdict, however grudgingly, 
They see closure in the construction of the temple at Lord Ram's birthplace, putting an end to the debate on the so-called victimization of the Hindus and historical wrongs. Sonia Gandhi and Kharge may want to attend the Ayodhya uh, event and also find closure by endorsing RSS Sar Sanchalak Mohan Bhagwat's line. You remember, he said, uh, why look for a civiling in every mosque? With Rahul Gandhi showcasing his Muhabbat Ki Dukan or Shop of Love and Sonia Gandhi at a Ram Lala consecration ceremony, some might be tempted to draw a parallel with the politically disastrous balancing acts of the Rajiv Gandhi government between Sahabano case and opening of Babri Mosque locks. Sonia may not want to remember it, but Rajiv Gandhi started his campaign in 1989 uh, general election from Ayodhya, promising Ram Raj. Weeks after the sixth anniversary of the Bamli Mosque demolition, the first anniversary after she became the Congress president in 1998, Sonia Gandhi sought to reposition her party on this politically contentious issue. The Congress Working Committee passed a resolution in January 99 that Hinduism is the most effective guarantor of secularism in India. Former Lok Sabha speaker P.S. Sangma, her loyalist then, had declared that she was not a practicing Christian and did not go to the church. That was all repositioning. 25 years later, today, Sonia Gandhi may want to revisit the CWC resolution and see if the party needs to recalibrate its position especially when the BJP has got the party on a sticky wicket on the Hinduism, Hindutva turf. Her decision to attend the Pran Pratishtha ceremony or not will be the starting point of that revision. Sonia Gandhi can't wish it away. That's all from me in this episode of Politically Correct. Thanks for watching.